So today we're going to be looking at Cubase's arpeggiator and we're going to be looking at four different levels of arpeggiator getting more and more advanced as we go through the video. So basically an arpeggiator is a device that gets the chord and then plays the notes of that chord in a sequence like this. But did you know that with Cubase's arpeggiator, we can also do things like this? And things like this. And finally, things like this. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So level one is a basic arpeggiator. Okay, so if I play a C major chord. And then add Cubase's Arpeggio SX. We get this. But playing a chord on my pads is kind of awkward. So let's load up Cubase's chord pads. And let's load up a preset. Let's go with this one, a lot of nine. And now each pad will play a chord. Put the arpeggiator back on. We get this. <laughs> and that A minus seven nine sounds like the theme tune to Stranger Things to me. And what an arpeggiator or an arp does is it steps through the sequence of notes in a chord. So most arpeggiators have the same set of basic functions. We have the direction or the play order of the notes. We have up, down, mostly down, mostly up, down, up. In our Apache SX, we have one shot mod. Which will just play the sequence through once. We have the step size. Right now we're on 16th notes. Pull it down to 8th notes. Each step size will be an 8th. We also have the length of each note. So if I put this down to a 30 second, we will have really short notes playing at 8th intervals. If I pull that up to make longer notes, we'll get this. We have our max polyphony, which is the total number of notes that can be played at any one time. Uh, underneath we have the priority, and that will be dependent on the max polyphony. So over here we have the transpose section, which right now is off, so it's only going to play the notes in the octave of the chord that I'm playing. But if we turn the transpose on, We'll start to hear notes above the octave. Right now we have this set to one, so we'll only play notes one octave above the chord. We move this up. We hear notes two octaves above. So on and so forth. And we can play back with the transpose order and number to get some quite interesting results. Put transpose to off and repeat to none. And if I go back to one shot mode and go over to the step size, and hit PPQ. We now have a time value, which I think is a milliseconds as opposed to a musical interval. 
and now we can do some interesting things like flam chords. I type in a number on my keyboard, make it a bit longer. Move this length up as well. Let's go a bit longer, make it a bit more obvious. And that's basically level one of arpeggiators. Level two is the arpeggiator sequences. But this being Cubase, of course, we can take things a step further. Let me just move this instrument out of the way. And if we hit this tab, sequence, you can see we are now presented with a few more options. So we could, if we wanted to, drop some MIDI out of our project into Apache. And then we would be able to play that MIDI sequence in the same way that we would an arpeggiator. But Apache SX, of course, comes with a whole load of presets. So let me just demonstrate that. Let me get ballad piano. So right now the velocity is going to play dependent on the MIDI sequence. So you can hear that's quite quiet. So I'm going to switch velocity to be triggered by the input as to which I hit each pad. Try a different one. You can see we've got a whole load to choose from. Let's try pop sequence one. <laughs> pop sequence three. Right, so I'm definitely going to have to switch from a piano and go to an OBX for this one. Let's try a 3 or 3 off. Level three is the chord pad sequences. Now, if we go into the chord pads themselves, we can actually take this concept a level further. I'm going to click on the E button here and we go over to player modes, go to the drop down section. And if I click on pattern and then go to import MIDI loop. You can see we now have all these options available. You can now see we have hundreds, maybe thousands of patterns we can choose from. Let's narrow it down, go piano, seeing as we're on piano, and let's just have a listen to a few of them. And if we exit out of this, you can see we're still playing the same chords, but instead of just cycling through individual notes as a regular arpeggiator does, what we're doing here is actually playing phrases based on the chord that's being played.
But again, this being curious, we can even take things a step further from here. So let me turn the patterns off. Go back to plain chords. And let's switch instruments from the grand to Halion Sonic. Level four is Flex Fraser. So I'm just going to load up a preset from Amped Electra. Sounds like this. And if we go into edit mode and into program and then go to show flex fraser and activate it we now have an arpeggiator that is actually built into the instrument we have some of the same features that we had in the basic arpeggiator we have our tempo scale Instead of note length, we have this gate scale. And here we have our octave control. And our velocity scale. We also have a swing feature. We can also choose the lowest key and the highest key that will be played, as well as the lowest velocity and the highest velocity. We can sync the arpeggiator to the tempo of our project. Or we can input our own tempo. We can switch it to hold, which means the arpeggiator will continue to play even after I've released the key. And we have a gated mode, which means as long as I hold down a pad, the arpeggiator will play. And as soon as I release it, it will stop. So right now it's on immediately, which just means the arpeggiator will play as soon as I hit a pad. We can switch it so that the arpeggiator will only trigger the next beat after I've hit the pad or the next measure after I've hit the pad. That is, of course, when Cubase is playing through a song. And uh, we'll get to restart mode in a minute, because if we go through the different arpeggiators in here, you can see again, we have hundreds, if not thousands. Let me load one up. You can hear we have the same kind of MIDI phrases that we had in the chord pads, only this time we have all the controls of an arpeggiator to go along with them. So if I pull down the gate scale, you will hear that phrase being played a lot more staccato. And the velocity scale, obviously be a lot more quiet. And of course we can swing it. And if we go back to the restart mode, what we have is some options to either restart that sequence every time a pad is played, or we can have that sequence sync to the host which means the sequence will play, but we can change chords within that sequence. So let me just demonstrate that by enabling the click track and playing along. Now within Halion Sonic, we can have eight phrases 
loaded up onto these eight different variation pads. So if I click on pad two, and I'm just going to pick another one at random. Let's go with 70s disco funk. Let's go with Funk 2C on variation 3 and on variation 4 let's go with Funk Organ so we can switch between them. If we look at my code pads, you can see I have the top four slots empty. So I'm actually going to utilize those to switch between these different variations. But to do that, I'm going to go to variation one, right click, and go assign to a trigger pad one. And now you can see on my trigger pad one, we have something assigned here. I can rename that if I want. So let's do that. And go to variation two. Sign that to trigger pad two. Rename it. Same with pad three. And with pad four. And now if I right click on the trigger pads and click learn trigger knot. and hit the pads. You can see as I hit the pads, they will go between the different variations. Right, so before I go, I do need to mention that this is not a sponsored video. Steinberg did not pay me to make these, although they do give me some software from time to time. I just needed to say that because I keep on forgetting. But anyway, that's it for now. I've been Craig Lopez. This has been Tutorialism. Now go make some music. Peace.